Hello, it's Juliana Michaels here and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm sharing all about the brand new Tim Holtz Distress Foundry Wax and how I've used it to create two cards. Tips and tricks, ideas and inspiration, and the two cards I created are coming up next. Distress Foundry Wax is the latest new product from Tim Holtz, and I have to admit that I haven't been this excited about a new product in a very long time. I think this one has me so excited because it's something I've been hoping Tim Holtz would add to his line of products, but with the twist that only Tim Holtz knows how to do. After having time to play and create with it, he has definitely achieved just that. You may or may not be familiar with the various wax products that are currently available. Most of them are beeswax based and come in a tube or jar. You can apply it to paper, metal, wood, or resin pieces to add a metallic-like finish. Distress Foundry Wax is quite different in that it's not beeswax based. It is quite different in that it's actually a liquid and you must shake the bottle until you hear the mixing ball rattle. Once mixed, you can squeeze it onto your craft mat and then use a brush or your finger to apply it to your chosen surface. If you have sensitive skin, I do suggest using a brush. You will notice that once you squeeze it onto your craft mat and start moving it around, it begins to thicken and becomes more cream-like. It will continue to thicken until it's dry. However, it's not permanent at this point and will still flume or rub off. To stop the fluming and to make it permanent, you must apply heat to it using a heat gun. I prefer the same type of heat tool you use for heat embossing as it will get you to the finish point faster. When you're heating the wax, that is when the real magic happens. Once you have heat set the wax, you can add another color or more of the same color and heat it again. A couple of other tips and tricks I have to share include recapping the bottle after each use and to make sure you do not leave the bottle next to where you are heating the wax. This will heat the wax inside the bottle and ruin it. The Tim Holtz Tonic Studios Nonstick Craft Mat is the best surface to use when working with this product. I tried working from my glass mat, but the wax stayed as a liquid and when I went to apply it, it seemed to just soak into the surface instead of me being able to apply it to the raised surface. Another thing I love about the foundry wax is that it has no odor and it cleans up easily with a bit of rubbing alcohol. I like to use a mini mister filled with 91% isopropyl alcohol, which is actually the same one I use when I'm working with alcohol inks. Now let's get on to how I use the foundry wax on the two cards I created. On this first card, I wanted to try to use foundry wax on a textured surface. I began with a piece of distressed watercolor paper trimmed to four by five and a quarter inches. I then did a little ink smushing. I took the saltwater taffy distress ink pad and smushed it directly onto my craft mat. I spritzed this with some water and then smushed my paper into the ink. Next, I used my heat it tool to dry the ink. I repeated this process of ink smushing until I was happy with the ink coverage. Once I had the inky background completed, I took the Tim Holtz script layering stencil and used some mint tape to hold the stencil in place on my paper. I used a palette knife to apply distressed texture paste through the stencil. I intentionally didn't apply it evenly so as to get a slightly distressed effect. Once I was finished applying the paste, I gently removed the stencil to wash it and set the paper to the side to let the paste dry. After the paste was dried, I pulled out the gilded and statue foundry waxes. I shook each bottle until the mixing ball was rattling. I then applied a bit of each color to my craft mat. I used my finger to mix the wax until it began to thicken and then applied it to my surface.
After applying the wax, I then use my heat gun to set the wax. Just watch as the magic happens and it takes on that truly metal-like look and permanent finish. As I mentioned earlier, Foundry Wax cleans up easily with a bit of rubbing alcohol. Here I'm using a mini mister filled with 91% isopropyl alcohol to clean off my craft mat, my fingers, and even my heat gun. Once the background was completed, I adhered it to a piece of white cardstock. For the embellishment, I added a bit of gold thread and a die cut butterfly. Yes, more butterflies. This time I used the Tim Holtz Scribbly Butterflies and die cut it from white cardstock. I couldn't bear to cover up that beautiful background I had just created. For this sentiment, I used a sticker from the metallic sticker book and layered it onto a piece of cardstock inked with saltwater taffy oxide and trimmed it to size. I love using this little trick of a piece of scrap cardstock and mint tape to help me trim down those tiny little strips. I really love the rich metallic effect the foundry wax adds to this textured background. On the second card, I'm sharing how I added the foundry wax to an embossed background. Once again, I began with a piece of Distress watercolor paper. I spritzed it with some water and then embossed it using the Tim Holtz 3D Texture Fades Damask Embossing Folder. Spritzing the paper with water until it is damp helps soften the paper fibers and gives you a better impression. It can also help prevent your paper from tearing or ripping when working with these 3D embossing folders. After I embossed the paper, I dried it using my heat tool. I then added some ink smushing, but this time I used Salvage Patina Distress Ink. Next, it was time to apply the foundry wax to my panel. On this card, I used Sterling, Mind, and Statue. Once again, I made sure to shake my bottles until I could hear the mixing ball rattle around. I applied the first two colors and decided I should go ahead and heat set these before trying to add another color. I had already discovered that trying to layer colors while they were still wet didn't work so well, unless of course you just want to mix the colors. I like to be able to see the individual colors, so I prefer to heat set them in between adding another color or even more color. You can always add more color. Personally, I'm mesmerized every time I heat set the foundry wax. I just love watching it go from okay to amazing as I heat it. Here I'm applying the third color, Mind, and repeating the same process of application, and then heating it to transform the finish. Even on embossed paper, the foundry wax is just magical. As on the first card, I couldn't bear to cover up too much of the background, so I opted for another simple butterfly die cut and sentiment. Thanks so much for watching this video featuring the Tim Holtz Distress Foundry Wax. And don't forget that you can stop by my blog using the link in the description box below to see photos and detailed shots of each of these cards. Thanks so much for watching. I'm truly grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much and it would mean so much to me to have your support. 